In-camera multiple exposures are a pretty fun way to get creative with your camera. Most cameras have this capability. They have some sort of option, usually called blending modes or combination modes that can confuse a lot of people. Things like additive, average, dark or bright light. What do all of those things mean when you are creating multiple exposure photos? That's what we're gonna look at in this video and it's gonna be generic to pretty much every single camera brand that offers this in-camera multiple exposure capability. When you're creating in-camera multiple exposures, and you may even be recording the raw file format, so you're creating two raw exposures, the camera is combining or overlaying both of those raw exposures into a single JPEG photo, that camera processor needs to know what to do with each exposure how it's going to stack or combine or overlay different RGB values that were created in each one of those exposures. Should it keep the darkest pixel and discard the rest from the other exposures? Should it average the RGB values of each pixel out with one another or add it? So that's what these combination or blending modes are doing. So I think the easiest way to kind of look at this is to explain it on a single pixel level. We're going to assume that we are creating uh, two exposures, we're combining them into one exposure, and we're going to look at what is happening to each individual pixel in those exposures. We're going to start with additive, which is the analog or traditional way of creating multiple exposures with film. Going to that pixel example, assuming we are using black and white and we're just looking at one single pixel. Let's say the upper left, the first pixel on the sensor for each exposure. If one of those exposures, that pixel is gray, and in the next exposure, that pixel is black, when you add gray to black, you're adding gray to nothing. And so that pixel in the final exposure is going to be gray. However, if each pixel is gray, you're adding gray and gray, that final pixel and that final exposure will be white because you're adding those two brightness values. So here's what it looks like using an example that I love to give, which is photographing some piano keys with some piano music. You can see that when these two exposures are combined with one another, the gray of the piano keys is getting added to the gray of the sheet music, so the final exposure is nearly white. That's kind of what I like to do when I'm using the additive method, is to slightly underexpose each photo so that the final photo looks more or less like a regular exposure. Now we look at the average method of blending, and this is just as it sounds. If one pixel in that first exposure is gray, and the same pixel in the second exposure is black, those are going to average out to a darker gray because we're averaging those two values. If each pixel is the same shade of gray, that's going to average out to the same shade of gray. And when you're using the average exposure blending method, you can expose normally or you can intentionally over or underexpose a photo depending on the type of effect that you want to get. We see in this example here, the same example with that piano and sheet music, that now we have more or less normally exposed those piano keys, normally exposed the sheet music. The final photo, we have more or less a normal exposure. We're just combining the keys and the sheet music. We're now gonna look at the bright or light method of multiple exposure blending. Based on the camera, they call it different things, even within the same camera manufacturer like Fujifilm. Some Fujifilm models call it bright, some call it light. Either way, it does the same thing, just like as it sounds. This method is going to pick the brightest RGB value at each pixel location and then use that in the final blended exposure. So looking at these pixels, if one exposure, that pixel is gray, and in the other exposure that pixel is black, the camera is going to pick the gray one for that final exposure. 
If that pixel is gray in the first exposure, but then white in the second exposure, the camera is going to pick the white for the final pixel at that location. Now, this method is a little bit more difficult to predict uh, and use with the intention of making, uh, you know, which bright pixels you want to be included in that final exposure. And you can see here in this example with our piano and our sheet music what this looks like. And this could have gone either way, depending on if those ivory keys were exposed more or less than the paper for that sheet music. And then you have dark, and dark is the opposite of bright or light. The camera is going to pick the darkest RGB value at each pixel location. So if that pixel is gray in one exposure and then black in the other exposure, the camera is going to pick the black RGB value for the final exposure. If that pixel is gray in the first exposure, but then white in the second exposure, now the camera is going to pick that gray pixel. And this is what our example looks like in the dark multiple exposure blending mode, which is honestly my favorite. And here's one final comparison that shows you all four of those blending modes with our example, additive, average, bright or light, and then dark. Some cameras only allow you to blend two exposures into a final combined exposure. In that case, it's a little easier to think about or predict what that final exposure is going to look like. Other cameras, like some Fujifilm cameras, allow you to blend up to nine exposures. And if you're blending nine exposures, I think at that point it's pretty much a roll of the dice what that final exposure is going to look like. It's a lot more difficult to predict what those blending modes are going to do to the final photo if you have so many exposures that are being combined. I just like to keep it simple. Avoid using overcomplicated scenes for all of the exposures that you're going to blend with one another. Maybe blend a complex scene or a complex exposure with one that's very simple and see how that turns out. You could also try blending silhouettes. So blend a silhouette against a pattern or something very simple. Those are some tips that you can try out when you're first starting to create these multiple exposures. But having an understanding of what these blending modes do is gonna be the first step in getting really creative with these multiple exposures. If you have any other questions or comments about these multiple exposure blending modes, please leave them below and we'll see you in the next video.